One of the big motivations at Bass Pro is, of course, wildlife management and conservation. And to have good conservation, we need to manage the land to support fish and game species. And today I want to share some about managing habitat for wildlife. All populations, humans, ticks, whatever, are a factor of the habitat. We can improve habitat and favor desired populations, or if the habitat's degraded or not providing the appropriate resources, of course, those populations are going to decline. Let's say you've got a new project and you're wondering what the first step is. You wanna attract some deer, turkey, or whatever your favorite game species is, but you really don't know where to start. Well, what I like to do is identify the limited resource for those species in the area. All species kind of revolve around food, cover, and water. And you figure out what species you want to manage for, and then look at those resources of food, cover, and water for those species in the neighborhood and see what's missing. Maybe cover is short, and you could add cover to the property where you're managing. So step one is identify what resources are available and just as importantly, which resource is the most limited of food, cover, and water in the neighborhood. Knowing that identifying the limited resource is one of the primary goals, let's talk about ways we can easily accomplish that. Talking to neighbors is a big one. They may say, oh boy, at this time of year, this resource is very limited. There's a lot of free resources online, including satellite images. You can zoom in, zoom out, and cover a big area around the area you're managing. Of course, nothing beats boots on the ground. It's always good to walk the area and kind of make a checklist. Oh, this area is really thick. It provides a cover for the species I'm looking for. Or I noticed all the ponds are dry at this time of year. Putting all that information together is a great step in charting the actual management actions you're going to implement. Again, when I say resources, I'm primarily talking about food, water, and cover. Food resources can change, acorns, no acorns, maybe there's ag and a farmer harvest a crop. We also wanna look at, are we trying to provide food year round or just during the hunting season? Maybe you've got a really small piece of property you're managing and your objective is to make sure deer are using that property during the hunting season. So it's important to define your objectives and then use these resources to meet that objective. I want to take a moment and talk about the different types of cover. Cover is a pretty generic word. If we're talking turkeys, there's nesting cover, which is slightly different than brooding cover. Nesting cover needs to be pretty thick, close to the ground. We don't want those predators finding that nest. Brooding cover is a little taller and maybe what we call umbrella habitat like ragweed where stem goes up and comes out, but there's bare ground below so those little bitty chicks can run around and search for insects, but have some cover from avian predators above. Thick cover for deer could be native grasses or areas that you've burned and allowed some hardwood saplings to come back. We wanna make it pretty doggone thick so deer feel very comfortable and wish to stay in that area. Again, it's always important to consider the species you're wanting to manage for and then dial in your management plan as specifically as you can. Water is something I believe we all consider because we're taught from an early age to drink a lot, stay hydrated, it's so important for our health. And that's also true for wildlife. But wildlife aren't as picky as where they drink. So even though you walk a property or you study it on a satellite image, you don't see a big river or a great big pond, that doesn't mean water's not available. There are oftentimes springs and seeps and just moist areas. And wildlife typically is more comfortable drinking there than a large body of water where they kind of feel like predators can pin them in. So little small water sites are often more attractive than large bodies of water. We talked about brooding and nesting cover, cover for deer, but it's really important to have secure cover. We call it security. And you might think about this, maybe there's a big patch of brambles and blackberries behind your house. That'd be good cover, some native grass in there. But you train your bird dogs or your rabbit dogs there every day. Well, that's not security. So we like to think about cover structurally and also an area that has very limited disturbance. So we want critters to feel very comfortable there and want to return there over and over again. So add security to that form of cover. Once you've identified all these resources and maybe you're thinking about where you want to place them or create them, establish them, 
don't forget there's a design aspect here. There's a little bit of art coming in this. It's not just checking off a list. Let's say you're a hunter, you wanna think about how you're going to approach that food source without alerting deer. Think about that food source in relationship to the cover. And if you're walking in daily where the predominant wind is taking your scent from the food source right to cover where you think deer are coming from, that's not a very good design. So thinking about the design, slope, aspect to the sun, if you're way up north and you know you wanna provide an area where deer can stay warm during those winter months, all that design should go into play really before you start implementing the plan. Kind of summarizing this, I believe it's always most important to start with identifying and establishing that limited resource. If you've identified its food, cover, or water, work first to establish that. Think about your design along the way to make sure you're establishing that in an area that meets your objectives. If you're interested in land management, stay tuned because there are gonna be several videos in this series addressing how we can all work to improve wildlife habitat.